Hello and welcome to today's lesson where we're looking at the five types of power and how to use them. Now we often think power comes from the direct responsibility that someone holds over others and that's true to an extent but it's not the whole truth. There are other types of power in existence and two social psychologists, John R.P. French and Bertram Raven, they identified five types of power in 1959. And this may be familiar to you, if not the theory, then in practice, if you've had different bosses or been worked with different leaders who've had very different styles yet been effective, the chances are that their power is coming from different power bases uh, rather than the official job title they hold. So the five types of power that they identified are coercive power, and that comes from one's ability to punish someone else for non-compliance with instructions. So for example, through fear of losing their job or their annual bonus, you can get someone to do something. Uh, secondly, reward power, and that comes from one's ability to issue rewards. So for example, through a bonus, or perhaps you might allow time off in, in, in lieu. Thirdly, legitimate power, and that comes from a person's formal right to issue directives or commands because of their position in the organization. So, for example, the CEO has the right to dictate the strategy. That comes from a legitimate power base. Fourthly, expert power, and that comes from one's experience or specialist knowledge. So, for example, a senior surgeon will display the expert knowledge for subordinates to trust them, and actually in a surgeon's case, it would probably be backed up by qualifications which would enable the subordinates to trust them as well. Referent power comes from being trusted or respected, and this is where people refer to you to find out what to do. Typically, people with referent power are role models. So for example, the boss who treats everyone fairly and with respect is a role model for the people he manages in the organization. So the reason for learning about the five types of power is so that we can become more effective managers and leaders by learning the situations where it is appropriate to use a particular type of power. Now, the five bases of power split between two categories of power. So you've got formal power, and that's defined by a person's position within an organization. Sometimes you'll hear this referred to as positional power. And the other category of power we have is personal power. And personal power is defined not by the person themselves, but by their followers. So let's look at each of the formal power sources. So firstly, starting with coercive power. Now, you use coercive power when you threaten that people will be punished in order to gain compliance. So such as threatening that they will be fired or demoted unless they hit their objectives. Now, coercive power only works when you have visibility of what the person under your power is doing. So you need, basically what I'm saying is you need high surveillance. Now, with people who consistently fail to meet the requirements of their role, you may need to wield coercive power Another time when it might be appropriate to use coercive power is when an organization is in crisis or cuts are threatened. So, for example, if a business needs to make cutbacks, it's essentially a turnaround situation and coercive power can be really useful for getting people to toe the line straight away. Now, otherwise using coercive power is rarely useful in a professional environment as it creates a lot of resentment and can lead to accusations of bullying. So reward power. You use reward power when you use rewards to achieve compliance with your wishes. Now, examples of rewards obviously include things like bonuses, pay increases, days off in lieu, training opportunities, or even simply a public compliment or thank you. The trick to using reward power is to create the expectation of a reward and trigger that part of the brain that enjoys being rewarded for hard work. So as a simple example, 
If you always publicly praise your high performers and never praise your poor performers, then you're going to create a desire in others to want that praise. And to get the praise, people will be prepared to work hard to get it. Now, note that with the exception of praise and thanks, it's possible to run out of rewards, or maybe you don't even have the ability to issue rewards. So in this case, your, your power becomes dim diminished if you're trying to use reward power. So for that reason, it's advisable to use praise and thanks frequently, and the other types of reward very infrequently and only for you know, really major achievements. So next we have legitimate power. You use legitimate power when you use your position in the organization to achieve compliance with your wishes. Now with legitimate power, the subordinate compl complies with your wishes because they believe you have a right to wield that power because of the position you hold. So a CEO holds legitimate power, as we've already said. So does a president who has been given a mandate by an election. Now, legitimate power is determined by title, but it's also determined by situation. So, for example, an ex-president cannot issue orders to the military. And while a currently serving president can obviously issue military orders, they cannot tell their citizens, for example, to eat healthily, as you know their power their legitimate power doesn't actually exist in that situation. So in terms of telling people to eat healthily, a president has no legitimate power. Now, legitimate power will be weakened within an organization if there isn't a very clear organizational structure and chain of command. And this can be a disadvantage in many cases of working within a matrix organization. So now let's take a look at the personal power sources. So firstly, expert power. So you, you use expert power when you use experience in a particular area and a past history of demonstrating solid judgment in that area to achieve compliance with your wishes. Now, subordinates clearly believe that your past experience will guide you to make the right decision. Essentially, you're a thought leader in a specific domain with specific expertise. Now, expert power doesn't just come from people having witnessed your experience firsthand. It can also come from reputation or from qualifications. Now, it's worth saying that this expertise doesn't need to actually exist, but that the perception of this expertise must exist. Now, some pitfalls do exist when relying on expertise to wield power, so for example, Expertise doesn't last forever, so perhaps technology moves on. So for an example, an expert promoted to a management position uh, because of their expertise with a particular IT system will find that their knowledge of that system diminishes over time, both as the system changes and as they spend increasing amounts of time focusing elsewhere. So because of this, it's advisable to still be amenable to the options of others even if you are you know, established as an expert in your field. And the fifth and final type of power is referent power. Now you use this power when you use your status as a trusted and respected role model to achieve compliance with your wishes. Now organization, organizational leaders and managers who have referent power have frequently gained this power over time by modeling the behavior they expect to see in others over a long period of time. Now, referent power is also gained by delegating over time increased authority and autonomy to subordinates. In general society, celebrities have referent power, which is why they're often paid a lot of money to advertise products to us. So their status as a role model makes us want to be like them, and so we buy the products that they promote as we think it will make us more like them or maybe we think that they'll approve of our decision to buy a product that they recommend. Now, in order to build your referent power in an organization, you need to have a low rate of employee turnover and you need to have the ability to build close personal relationships. And 
that's obviously because it takes time to build referent power. So how to use referent power? Well, if you're in a leadership position, ask what you want to achieve and which type of power you are naturally drawn to. And then once you've done that, you know, check the five power types to see if there's a better power base to approach the situation from. And finally, remember to balance short-term and long-term goals. So for example, coercive power might get something done today, but if it results in high employee turnover in the medium term, you know, that's very costly for organizations. So you do need to balance which is the right approach. And the other way you can use these five types of power is if you're feeling powerless, um, we all hold a literal power even in you know, the worst and most challenging situations. So check through the list of power types to see how you can take some power from whatever the situation you find yourself in. So in summary, in 1959, two social psychologists, John R.P. French and Bertram Raven, identified five underlying bases of power as follows. Coercive, reward, legitimate, expert, and referent. Now, we haven't touched on it today, but it's worth knowing that it later a sixth type of power was introduced called informational power. Now, power and how you use it can impact your relationship with colleagues, organization culture, and employee engagement and motivation. It can be a really good idea to check through the list of power types before an important conversation to ensure that you're you know, approaching the in interaction from the best possible power base. That's it for me. Look forward to speaking to you again soon.